Hi, my name is Arthur Cummings from the Wellington Eye Clinic in Dublin, Ireland, and I'd like to share with you today the methods we use to improve our toric RL outcomes. Using the Hoyer online toric calculator, I now enter the Ks as well as the appropriate axes and the surgically induced astigmatism in my incision location. Ensure that you choose the correct power of lens. In this case, I'm targeting minus one. I have three options, and I'm going to select the recommended option. And the overview shows the lens placed at 99 degrees. And from the surgeon's view, I can see my incision location at 10 degrees. The Devgen marker is marked with ginger and violet and placed at 99 degrees to make the marks on the cornea. On occasion, such as here, there is not sufficient space and I can only make the mark at 180 degrees and then intraoperatively I can use these as a reference to make the 99 degree mark. The eye trace is now performed and a placido disc topography is obtained. This shows me a with the rule astigmatism and I can now engage the toric planner. I have astigmatism and axis as obtained from the placido disc. If I like, I can override this with data from the ROL master or the lens star and also remember to include the incision location and the amount of surgically induced astigmatism. The iTray software now shows me that with an incision location at 10 degrees, the steep axis of the ROL neatly aligns with the steep axis of the cornea at 99 degrees. If I select option 2, which is the recommended option, I am left with 0.44 astigmatism at 99 degrees. But if I am completely sure that my incision location is at 10 degrees and I'm totally convinced of my induced astigmatism, I can then select an overcorrection with a T5 lens which will leave me completely spherical. One can see here how the incision location impacts on the power of the IOL. What I'm going to do now is to see if during the operation I decide I need to make a, a change. What would happen if I went to 100 degrees where I normally work? And if I move this incision now to the 100 degree mark, you can actually see there's 100 there, that as I move the, the incision, it does absolutely nothing to my lens. My lens is still at 99 degrees. So, but it's giving me a slightly different outcome. So with this particular option, option two, if I make my incision over there, I've increased my astigmatism to 0.99, whereas when my incision is back at nine degrees or 10 degrees, my residual astigmatism is now 0.44. And I like a bit of residual astigmatism with the rule because it tends to make you see better up close than you would normally expect. What I'm going to show you now is go with the option you see in front of you and that leaves me with a very, very spherical result. And what I want to show you too is it gives you an awful lot of safety. If for whatever reason I get the incision wrong and I go slightly, and this isn't even slightly, this is 20 degrees out, I still only have 0.16. If I go 20 degrees the other way, again, I've still got a tiny amount of astigmatism. So this is telling me that if I make an incision over there, I've got a really broad area where I can make the incision and still get a very acceptable result. What I want to show you now is if you believe that you have no induced astigmatism, what you'll notice now is that wherever the incision is made, it has absolutely no effect on the placement of the IOL. The aisle is being placed at 99 degrees. And no matter where your incision is, that's where the aisle needs to be placed. On the other hand, most of us do induce astigmatism. And just to show this more graphically, I'm going to induce one diopter of astigmatism to show you how the incision changes the axis of the lens. And now you can see the axis of the lens is at 79 degrees when our incision is at 133. But as I move the incision to 120 degrees, the axis has moved to 78. And, I, and you can see now it starts coming back. So the beauty of this device is irrespective of the amount of astigmatism that you induce, as long as you know what it is, you can key it in and you can use this device to really tell you where to place your IOL. What I want to show you now is choose this option. It's the lens, the T5, that's going to leave us with the smallest amount of residual astigmatism. 
the incision suits me and I'm now going to put an additional safety feature in and this is the Zaldivar caliper where I'm going to go and move this to the marks on the cornea which were right over there and the marks on the cornea which were right over there and I now have additional information where that I'm 85 degrees away my toric marks on the IOL if you extend them to the limbus are 85 degrees away from my corneal mark and on the nasal side they're 81 degrees away and this is quite a common finding with toric lenses and and their positioning for the simple reason that very seldomly do you have the center of the cornea correspond perfectly to the center of the pupil and after all we are centering the lens on the center of the pupil we can generate a surgeon view and this is how it's going to look in the theater and the next step now is to simply print this and you now have an additional printout to the online calculator that you can use in the theater to help you get the surgery right all right so now we have the printout and because i'm going to be sitting temporarily this is the view i'm going to have from temporal and it shows me exactly where to place my incision at 9 or 10 degrees and where my markings need to be for the alignment at 99 degrees and I now have this as well as the view that I got from the online calculator and between the two of those it's extremely unlikely that we won't get this right. In theatre the lens comes pre-loaded this is handed to the surgeon and the first item on the agenda is to ensure that this is the correct lens and the correct power. Helon is now injected into the port and it must be ensured that the viscoelastic covers the ROL. The second step is to remove the protective cover and the third step is to slide the slider forward as far as it will go. Now the lens can be seen moving into the injection chamber and now the preloaded cartridge is removed from the protective casing and the plunger is now engaged by pushing forward and turning clockwise until it engages the screw and you can now see the IOL and the haptics moving forward. The injector is now placed inside the eye and the plunger is turned clockwise to deliver the lens very gently into the eye once the lens has started unfolding inside the eye, it is positioned at the axis as predetermined and the procedure is completed by hydration of the incision sites. Right, the eye trace is a unique system that has both a wavefront aberrometer as well as a corneal topographer in the same device. So once these images have been obtained, I can go and load the wavefront from this patient, there it is, as well as the corneal topography of this patient and now go and view these two images simultaneously. This is the Chang analysis but I'm going to show you the summary over here which shows you the corneal topography, the entire wavefront of the eye, the wavefront generated by the cornea and the wavefront generated by the internal optics which is basically the lens of the eye. And when we see that the entire wavefront of the eye looks very similar to the entire wavefront of the cornea, then we can deduce in this case that all these aberrations are from the cornea. I'm going to show you another case. And this is a case where we have someone with lenticular astigmatism. And again, we're going to load the wavefront and then the corneal topography. And once these are both loaded, that's the Chang view. This is the simple view. This is the corneal topography showing a very, very regular cornea. This is the total wavefront. And now what you see is that the total wavefront matches the intraocular wavefront almost perfectly, while the corneal wavefront, again, is pretty normal. So now the entire wavefront from the eye is generated by the lens. So we know, yeah, that this is a case of lenticular astigmatism. And if we put a toric lens in here, we're going to make matters worse. We need to, yeah, put a spherical lens in. And the last case I want to show you is one which teaches us even more. And again, we're going to load the wavefront and the corneal topography and view these simultaneously. This is the Chang view, which shows you the HRMS. This is the view we, we're more used to. So this is just showing simply the HRMS of the cornea 
with the individual aberrations like coma, trefoil, quatrefoil, and so forth. And I'm going to go to the, the summarized view. And again, here's the corneal astigmatism. This is the total wavefront that's not really showing too much defect. And this is the wavefront of the internal optics. And this is the wavefront of the cornea. And so what you can see here is that the combination of the internal optics and the external optics from the cornea are giving us a wavefront that is pretty decent, that's quite decent. So in this particular case, the cornea is compensating for a lenticular problem or vice versa. So a very, very powerful piece of software that can either simultaneously capture data or separately, but allows you to view them at the same time and really deduct where a problem is coming from. This is another interesting case that I'd like to share with you. And this is someone who had LASIK 15 to 20 years ago and came back saying, look, wouldn't you mind doing a bit more laser for me? My vision's starting to deteriorate again. And so you could see some residual astigmatism from this previous surgery. But now on doing the eye trace, we suddenly found that the biggest problem is internally. And you can see that the entire wavefront of the eye is matching the lenticular wavefront or the internal optics wavefront. So we know now that the biggest part of this problem is actually from the lens. And you could see the lens, but this gives you confirmation that this lens need to be, needs to be treated. All right, so what we can go and do now is we can go and show the patient what would happen if the cataract was treated. So I'm going to go now to Estellan E. And this is what the Estellan E looks like with the entire wavefront with, from the cataract as a result of the internal optics and from the cornea. So I can show the patient, if we go and treat your cornea, or sorry, if we go and treat your cataract, you will still be left with this defect unless you put a toric IOL in. Because once the cataract is gone, if a spherical IOL goes in, we're left with this corneal astigmatism. So until we treat the corneal astigmatism with an intraocular toric IOL, we're going to have an unhappy patient. So this is an ideal patient for a toric IOL. Thank you for watching. I have enjoyed sharing with you how the Hoya Eye Trace Surgical Workstation and the Hoya Online Toric Calculator have helped improve my outcomes with Toric RLs. I hope it does the same for you.